This has to do with animals and wildlife because there's this understandable like fear of animals and wildlife when you're backpacking and I think I just brushed my teeth so this tastes terrible. All right, we're gonna be talking about beginner myths and mistakes that beginner backpackers make and stuff like that. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you guys watching this probably already know most of this stuff, so like, hear me out. It's always good to have a reminder, and most importantly, if you have any additional tips to add to this list, please comment them below or above if you're watching this upside down. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because a lot of people watch these videos but they don't remember that they haven't subscribed yet so then they just think they're subscribed when I tell them to subscribe. So double check, double check and subscribe. All right, backpacking myth slash mistake number one that stupid people make. And by the way, the reason I know that stupid people fall for these myths is because I fell for most of these myths. All right, backpacking myth number one is that what is that the gear that your favorite YouTubers use is like objectively the best gear for you to use as well. This is a myth. And I guess to be fair, there's not many YouTubers out there that are claiming like, you must use the gear that I use because it's the best. And most of them are pretty good about saying like, hey, this is just my experience. But I do think that people often, and this is something I've learned from this channel, I do think that people often see YouTubers using gear and then they just assume that that is automatically like the best gear for every person in every single scenario and that's just not the truth unfortunately. Most of the gear that other YouTubers use like is pretty good gear obviously but the thing you have to understand about backpacking gear and I'm sure a lot of you will agree with this is it's so personal. So there could be a piece of gear that works fantastic for you. It checks all your boxes, you know, works great, just gives you a huge freaking gear boner. But for somebody else, that piece of gear might not work nearly as well as it works for you. In fact, it might even suck for them. And on the surface, this is a weird phenomenon, right? Because you think like it's a backpack, for instance, like it's got to work the same for everybody, but that's just not the case. And speaking of backpacks, I did, where is it? Oh, it's right here. Get that. Get out of here. I did a gear review of my ULA CDT backpack a few videos ago, and I freaking love this backpack. As you can see in that video, I talk it up, talk about all this great stuff. And in the comments of that video, I would say like most people kind of agreed or most people were intrigued, but there were a few people that shared their not so great experiences with this pack. And not in like a douchey way either, like they weren't trolling me like, oh, backpack. No, they actually gave some insight into why they didn't like this backpack and why it didn't work for their specific style of backpacking. And I appreciate that. I'm just one hiker with one opinion about this and it works great for me, but it might not work as great for you. So just keep that in mind when you're watching gear reviews and watching YouTubers talk about their gear and stuff. Just take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt, unless it's me talking, in which case you should basically just probably not listen to anything I say. And now that I've destroyed my credibility and spilled a bunch of beer on my shoulder, let's get into item number two on the list. The second myth is that you need the best most like sexy newest gear in order to backpack. And to be fair, I don't think there's actually a lot of people out there that are saying this, but it is kind of a weird implication or vibe you get from watching a lot of YouTube videos sometimes because YouTubers get a lot of like the newest and sexiest and like most expensive gear and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'll take your free sexy gear all day long. That being said, that doesn't mean that you absolutely need that really new expensive stuff in order to succeed backpacking. And this is something I really, really wanna make clear because I hate the idea of somebody not getting into hiking and backpacking simply because they didn't wanna spend like $700 on a DCF like trekking pole tent or something like that. In fact, I actually get a lot of people that ask me, they're like, hey Kyle, like I'm just gonna start backpacking, like what backpacking gear should I get? Cause this is how people message me. And the thing I always tell them is like, you should just go out and get what whatever is like most access <laughs> whatever is most accessible for you to get your hands on, both financially and just in terms of convenience. Cause let's be honest, and I'm actually gonna touch on this in a point coming up, but a lot of the time backpacking kind of sucks. Like it's <laughs> it's not always the most fun thing in the world. And what I really would hate to have ha to have happen, God, is for someone to go out and spend like thousands of dollars on like a bunch of really expensive like ultralights sexy backpacking gear that Dan Becker told them to buy and then use it like once, find out that they hate hiking like me, I guess, and then just like never go hiking and ever use the expensive gear again and just waste all that money. So for anybody who's wondering like what insert piece of gear should I get here because I'm first starting out backpacking and I've never done it before or whatever, I would say like, I mean, obviously you gotta get like 
safe gear. You can't just go out there with a bunch of crap that's gonna fail on you and put you in a dangerous situation. But for the most part, look at like used gear on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. I mean, you don't need the lightest sleeping bag in the world. As long as you have one that's warm enough for you, you're gonna be okay. You don't need like the newest and greatest DCF tent. As long as you have one that's gonna keep you warm and dry, you're gonna be okay. You should find out if you actually like backpacking first and find out if it's something worth investing your money and your time into. And then at that point, you know it's gonna be worth it to spend more money and to invest more money into some lighter weight or just better gear for you to use out there. All right, backpacking gear, no. Myth number three, this has to do with animals and wildlife because there's this understandable like fear of animals. And I think a lot of people have this idea that the most dangerous situations you're gonna find yourself in while backpacking have to do with like a bear encounter or some sort of wildlife encounter, right? And I'm here to call bullshit on that. And by the way, in doing so, I am not trying to downplay like the significance of animals either because certainly they can be dangerous. Like do your homework, keep yourself safe with animals. However, I feel like most of the time when hikers find themselves in dangerous situations, it's usually not because of an animal. It's usually because of something related to the weather or some sort of gear failure or bad gear choice they made. Or I hate to say it, but maybe even due to another hiker that they met on the trail, as scary as it is to think about that. We had a bit of an encounter with a drunk lady today. She says her dog Spike that's in the back seat. <laughs> She'd be afraid to let him out because he might bite or murder one of us. And then two seconds later she lets him out. <laughs> she took him out. There's just like so many different like places that the danger could come from, right? And so to just like focus in on just animals, I think is a little bit misleading. And I'm not trying to like scaremonger here. I'm not saying you should be like, you know, fearful to go backpacking or anything like that. Be mindful of the fact that, okay, animals are just like instinctively scary to humans. But the reality is most of the potential danger is probably gonna come from like a different place, a river crossing. That's a really dangerous one. That's probably one of the most dangerous ones, honestly. All right, this next backpacking myth is that it's all sunshine and rainbows. You might've heard this one before, but this is like so pervasive, so common that I really think it's important to go over this one. The truth is backpacking is not always fun. In fact, a lot of time it just sucks. I mean, it sucks enough that I was able to make an entire YouTube channel out of making fun of the fact that it well, it kind of sucks. I think the reason this exists is largely due to social media. I mean, that's what it usually gets blamed on, like, oh, those damn YouTubers and Instagrammers. But the truth is backpacking has been kind of like glorified and romanticized even before social media. I mean, magazines, there's like entire magazines out there dedicated to kind of glorifying backpacking and hiking. Anyways, back to the social media thing. I don't really think there's anything wrong with like just posting the good stuff. I mean, if you're just like blatantly lying and taking a really shitty hiking experience and like twisting it to be fun, then I guess I have a problem with that. But if you like go out on a hike and you have fun in some parts and then the other parts suck and you only post about the fun parts, I mean, let's be honest, like that's not that big of a deal. I mean, usually when we look back on our hiking experiences, we tend to kind of like build up the good parts and kind of like forget the bad parts. However, it can be a problem because people who have never backpacked before just see all of the good stuff and they think like, oh, backpacking is just like super, super fun and I'm gonna have all these amazing experiences and I don't need to research like what to do if things go wrong and I don't need to take like precautions against certain things. And so yeah, it can be kind of a problem in that regard. I mean, to be honest with you, I definitely fell for this when I first started like watching a bunch of YouTube videos and just like, I got so in love with the idea of like through hiking and I just, didn't really comprehend how things can go wrong. And as a result, as many of you know, if you watch this channel on the regular, my first ever attempt at backpacking and through hiking was a complete show. All right, the next backpacking myth. So this one might get me in a little bit of trouble. There might be some people out there who disagree with this one. So this myth is that more gear is better when you're backpacking. I don't think that's true. And that probably won't surprise a lot of you if you watch this channel. More gear does not mean you're gonna be more prepared or that you're gonna be safer while you're backpacking. And again, I understand why people fall for this one. I really do because though a lot of people, it seems these days, don't really take the time to do the research they need to do, the ones that do very often get bogged down by just so much like freaking information, so many different videos and articles. And, and like, then you see those gear checklists like on random websites sometimes, it'll be like, this is all like essential gear. And then it'll have like freaking 30 different things, like half of which you probably don't need. And so they start to think like, okay, maybe I'll bring like, five pairs of socks just so I have a couple extra in case. I'll bring like a bunch of clothes I don't need. I'll bring like two sleeping bags and 
and I'm kind of exaggerating a little bit, but there's definitely people that have done this. I mean, I'm sure you guys have all heard stories of through hikers on the Appalachian Trail who start with like 80 pound packs. Like, I'm sorry, but unless you're going in the dead of the winter, like you probably don't need 80 pounds on your back. It is a fine line. So you don't want too much gear because if you have too much gear, your pack is gonna be really heavy. It's gonna be really impactful on your legs and your knees and your joints. And then you're probably gonna hurt yourself. That's that's the, that's the reason. But you also don't want like not enough gear, right? Because you gotta have the essential gear to keep you warm and dry and safe. And I'm not gonna stand here and pretend I know exactly like where the line is drawn either. I don't, so I would say it's still probably safest to err on the side of bringing like an extra piece of gear if you really can't make up your mind. However, if you're going into like packing your gear and your mindset is just like, okay, I need extra everything because like something might go wrong, then you're probably gonna be a little bit off base. And again, this is one of the things that you're just gonna learn as you gain more experience because when you first start backpacking, it's like, how are you supposed to know exactly what you need and what you don't need? You're just just guessing or even if you guess like okay I need less gear versus more gear like it's it's just a guess at the end of the day so a really important piece of advice and if you're gonna take anything away from this video at all it should be this piece of advice right here is to not get discouraged and frustrated when you're first starting. Go into it knowing that you don't know very much. Don't get cocky. Don't think that it's gonna be just like the easiest thing in the world. Go into your first trip with some humility. Know that you're gonna learn a lot more from just one night backpacking than you will from spending days watching dumb videos like this. And just like try to have as much fun as you can. And if it isn't that fun, don't worry about it. Correct your mistakes and give it another try. Folks, like I said, if you haven't subscribed already, you need to subscribe, please. I am literally begging you. SMASH SUBSCRIBE! That felt pretty good, actually.